Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today. Today's webinar is Sandalwood Beyond the Fragrance and is presented by Down Under Enterprises. Your presenter today is Deanne Prather. Deanne founded Down Under Enterprises in 2001, originally selling tea tree oil from her family's farms in Australia. Deanne's previous experience includes management consulting and investment banking. Deanne holds a Master's of Commerce and Finance from the University of New South Wales a Bachelor's of Economics from the University of Sydney, and an Associate's Diploma from the Applied Finance Institute. Deanne is currently the President of the Essential Oil Producers Association of Australia, a member of the federal government's AgriFutures Tea Tree R&D Advisory Panel, and a recipient of the 2015 New South Wales Premier Export Award for Women in International Business. My name is Abby Pirro with UL, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Please send us your questions by typing them into the question box located on your screen. Our panelists will answer them at the end of the presentation. We are recording today's event and we'll send you a link by email when it has been posted to ulprospector.com. Now I would like to turn the presentation over to Deanne. Would you like to begin? Thank you, Abby, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I look forward to talking to you about Sandwood Beyond the Fragrance. Uh, we're obviously joined with, by Danny Hetarachi and Cam Sanderson, and we look forward to giving you the information. Just a little bit about who Down Under is, in, for those people who may not be familiar with us. Uh, we are growers of essential oils, and uh, tea tree oil predominantly. We also grow other essential oils. And we also work with other growers in Australia to distribute a full range of native Australian essential oils. Uh, tea tree, sandalwood, eucalyptus is just one of the some of the oils that we distribute uh, on behalf of other growers in Australia. Before we get started into the presentation on sandalwood, I want to make a very exciting announcement that we've just started entered into an exclusive distribution agreement with Univar Solutions. It's effectively immediately, and they will be distributing Down Under's full product line within Europe, Middle East, and Africa. We're very excited with the partnership as they have five formulation labs and a local European warehouse. And we're part of the move by Univar into the naturals with their other uh, agreements with Cargill, Hallstar, and the purchase of of both soils in 2018. It complements our direct sales and warehouse in North America and Australia and our network of commercial partners across Asia. So today we're going to be talking about a variety and distribution of sandalwoods, very importantly the therapeutic properties of Australian sandalwood, the traceability for Australian sandalwood oil in particular, and the sustainability of Australian sandalwood. To start off with, uh, everybody is generally very familiar with sandalwood oil. It's been well chronicled throughout history across multiple countries for its cosmetic, medicinal and ritualistic offerings. Today, it's used extensively as a base fragrance in cosmetic formulations and in traditional applications in a religious perspective. In terms of the botanics, sandalwood oil is derived from the sandalum genus, it is found as perennial tree or shrub. It has a lifespan ongoing, but usually needs 20 to 30 years to, as a minimum to produce high quality oil. And new plantations obviously don't develop overnight. There's been a seedy side uh, to sandalwood on the Indian sandalwood side. Uh, uncontrolled harvesting has led to uh, destruction of the forests. What happens when you actually produce sandalwood essential oil? The whole tree has to be taken to produce that as this amazing oil. Obviously, if there hasn't, if there's not some sort of sustainability program around it, the the whole tree is taken and and it becomes a a used resource. Unfortunately, because it's such a precious essential oil, traceability has been a problem. And uh, is a very serious, serious consideration when using sandalwood oil. Previously, uh, the Australian government has exported Australian sandalwood into India. You can see from the chart here that those exports stopped in 2016. 
so we no longer, as a continent, are actually exporting the sandalwood into India. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Hedarachi to talk about the therapeutic uses of Australian sandalwood. Thank you, Diane. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, I'm going to cover the therapeutic uh, uses as well as a uh, bit about the distribution of sandalwood and the standards uh, uh, around sandalwood uh, and also the safety uh, aspects of sandalwood. Uh, sandalwood is if you're familiar with the East uh, Far Eastern cultures or the South Asian um, cultures, sandalwood is known more than a uh, more as a medicine than a uh, fragrance compound. So um, back in two, uh, two twenty CE, uh, Charaka Samhita, one of the oldest Ayurvedic compendiums uh, written, has recorded the use of sandalwood as a medicine. And then the distribution of sandalwood uh, in this map, what you could see is the uh, we uh, rank the sandalwood based on its quality, which I'll talk a bit later. Um, which you can see the number one denotes to sandalwood album, which is known as the Indian sandalwood, which is naturally found in Indian subcontinent and Indonesia, uh, the uh, eastern parts of the Indonesian uh, archipelago. And then um, if you see in the northern parts of Australia, you can see because it's been recently planted in the past few decades, uh, been trialed and now successfully planted in um, in Australia. And the other varieties are number two is the uh, Santalum Yassi from uh, uh, Fiji and Tonga. And number three is uh, Austro Caledonicum, uh, Santalum Austro Caledonicum from uh, Vanuatu and New Caledonia. Number four is Santalum Paniculatum from uh, Hawaiian Islands, mainly the uh, Hawaii Island, the Big Island. And number five is uh, Santalum Magrogari from Papua New Guinea. And number six is Santalum Spicata, what we call as the Western Australian sandwood or the Santalum Spicata species, which is generally known as the oil of Australian sandalwood in standards. And number seven is Santalum Lassensialatum, again from north uh, of Australia, northeastern. Uh, there are two standards uh, governing sandalwood. One is the oil of Sandalwood or the oil of Sandalwood album, which is the ISO 3518 and the ISO 227694 oil of Sandalwood Atom or the oil of Australian Sandalwood. When we go to the next slide, we could see what governs the quality because the sweet uh, woody aroma of Sandalwood comes from two uh, sesquiterpene alcohols, namely cis alpha santalol and cis beta santalol. So the, the composition of them are very high in Indian sandalwood, which is which you can see in the uh, in the standard document uh, given for Indian sandalwood here, which is which records only those two compounds because it makes predominantly from these two sesquiterpenes. But the Australian sandalwood is a mix of different sesquiterpene alcohol, so it gives a more complex aroma. Whereas the people who prefer the unique sandalwood aroma, the woody uh, sweet. Uh, scented aroma. They, it is more towards the uh, Indian sandalwood, but if you like more complex, earthy aromas, people would go. Uh, not just the aroma, it do affect the, um, the therapeutic properties. If we go to the next slide, we could see that uh, sandalwood has been used as a traditional medicine and been recorded in uh, not just the older material medicals, uh, which is the Indian Ayurvedic uh, material medicas or Chinese uh, material medicas, even the modern day Ayurvedic pharmacopoeia or the Chinese pharmacopoeia, pharmacopoeia of the People's Republic of China, uh, they clearly and repeatedly uh, report about sandalwood as a as a uh, medicinal agent. And when you see here, what you have to make sure it is in these traditional pharmacopoeias, it's always the sandalwood album, uh, the Indian sandalwood, and it is used in form of powder, the, the wood powder, or in case of Chinese pharmacopoeia, as the sandalwood oil as well. So it has a lot of uh, lot of traditional uses, such as blood purifying, diarrhea, uh, like that. But when you go to the Western medicine, it has been used as an antibiotic for quite a long time. That is something which many of us don't know because it has been even recorded in the uh, 1932 British pharmacopoeia up to that, from, from a long time it is recorded as, as a medicine and even in the times of uh, the first world war it has been used as an antimicrobial agent yeah. and for that purpose 
the British Commonwealth used the Western Australian sandwood, and it has been distilled in large quantities in Australia and in uh, and other parts of the Commonwealth to use as a as an antimicrobial agent. So these antimicrobial properties has been always interested uh, microbiologists and the natural products uh, chemists for quite a long time. So there have been numerous studies conducted on uh, antimicrobial properties. Um, there's a very detailed uh, report on the antimicrobial properties, the MIC 50 values, MIC percentages, the zone of inhibitions given in the uh, Sandwood White Paper, which is prepared by the Downland Enterprises. You can uh, go to the through these detailed uh, studies. And some of the very um, clear ones are something like Clostridium infections, which are, which is not easily treated with normal antibiotics or other natural uh, therapies. Clostridium infection can be treated with uh, sandwood oil. And also the uh, antiprotozoan and antifungal activity is also quite uh, pro predominant in uh, when treated with, uh, with uh, sandwood oil. Uh, you could see sandalwood oil is uh, has a known activity, has been traditionally used, and it, it's it's a known uh, agent against acne. So the acne causing uh, it has been tested specifically on acne causing acne causing a bacteria, the uh, Propionobacterium acne, and it has shown that 69% of the cohort uh, in this uh, study um, has shown um, improvement, and 4% of them. Has demonstrated complete recovery from the scars of and uh, rec recurrence of acne. Uh, it is used in traditional formulas in Ayurveda and also uh, it used in a lot of uh, modern day uh, tro tropical applications uh, for acne in in a traditional sense. Yeah, one of the very unique properties of uh, uh, sandalwood oil is the antiviral activity because this is uh, most of the uh, essential oils show an antifungal antibacterial activity but antiviral activity is uh, is very it's very unique to um, sandwood because it shows a, a very effective uh, activity against the herpes simplex virus one and two types uh, which which cause uh, cold sores to genital herpes so it has been studied in um, from the clinical isolates uh, for uh, acyclovir, which is the common antiviral drug um, resistant uh, HSV one uh, strains, and also uh, which has been successfully tested for papilloma virus, um, human papilloma virus, which cause the warts. So uh, sandalwood has been known for uh, known for the activity against genital and uh, dermal warts. Uh, so uh, sand it, it is it has been studied and clinically proven and as you can see from this slide there are several uh, patented uh, formulas uh, using sandalwood oil as a treatment for uh, warts and the inflammatory activity this actually complements the um, and anti acne activity because you could see uh, the general uh, activities what we study on a uh, essential oil on on prostaglandins or ketsanocyte pathway has been studied, which is one could argue here most of the anti uh, essential oil, essential oil do that. But if you go further, the interleukin activities and uh, reducing the TNF alpha uh, 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 expressions is quite predominant in uh, uh, in sandalwood oil, which shows it is like it is not just following one pathway, but actually uh, working on a multiple pathways to reduce the inflammation. Uh, there's a phase one, uh, phase two clinical study where the phase one study of this has been uh, successful and then they moved to the phase two clinical studies to see the um, uh, reduction of uh, psoriasis in, uh, in psoriatic patients. So we are uh, waiting to see the outcome of this study, which is not something uh, which we're involved in, but it, it's a very interesting study to see how uh, the psoriasis has been uh, get treated with sandalwood oil containing uh, formulations. Uh, the uh, central nervous system uh, activities. I think it's it's a well known uh, belief that sandalwood oil has a calming effect on um, on people when it's used, and 
It has been studied through a series of uh, clinical and uh, animal studies. And what they found is actually you could see the alpha central and beta central, like you can detect it in uh, in nanogram quantities in 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 plasma when when people inhale it, or even animal models when they inhale it. So that means you can it actually comes to your uh, system and it goes through your central nervous system. So it shows a uh, neuroleptic or like calming effect, uh, sedative analgesic effect. Um, checked on mice and also in certain clinical studies. And then uh, the transdermal application, when you apply it on skin as a balm, as a, as a cream, it has a uncoupling, uh, uncoupled typical uh, physiological to, uh, it, it's, a, it's a difficult, it, it's not a typical arousal behavior, but it's calm, but it keeps your mind activated sort of a behavior which has been uh, studied um, through certain clinical studies. The safety and toxicity of uh, sandrodite has been uh, studied uh, quite uh, for quite a long time because it has been uh, it is registered in a lot of uh, uh, cosmetic as well as pharmaceutical uh, documents. So it, the studies have been uh, are available, and the acute oral toxicity is on uh, mouse murine model, which is three point eight grams per kilogram, which is which is a very very high value. That means the safety is uh, safety is high. And also the dermal toxicity is it's very it's five grams per kilogram uh, for the subject, so it should be a very expensive toxicity if someone has to do get toxic get uh, poisoned by sandalwood. So there's uh, no skin irritation observed, and also the contact dermatitis is um, it's varied between zero to two point four when it's a sensitization we studied on a human re repeat uh, patch uh, repeat in patch test. And the only um, problem what we see is that the uh, trans trans finisol present in the Western Australian sandwood is a non sensitizing compound in uh, uh, one of the listed uh, sensitizing compounds. Uh, the uh, sand because uh, sandwood oil is registered with US FDA and also with the European Commission and also uh, Flavor Extract Manufacturers Association also classified this as a um, GRAs class three. And uh, IFRA, as well as the European Commission, uh, restricts the um, the limits of uh, trans transfarnisone. So the IFRA limits are for category one, which is the high, uh, but the most uh, sensitive category. It's 0 0.08 percent uh, weight by weight for the for, for the total formulation, and uh, for on skin it is 2,700 micrograms per centimeter. So it's it's a Pretty, pretty uh, high level, so you can use uh, Western Australian sandwood without having much issues with the IFRA uh, standards. However, the European uh, standards also comes much closer with, with a little bit of a stricter uh, limit of 0 0.001, which we could uh, discuss with the downland enterprises when you're selecting your product. It's not limiting to uh, not to use it, but you have to mention that Farnesol is, uh, the product contains Farnesol. Uh, I would uh, like to hand over to Diane to uh, summarize the, uh, my presentation. Diane, thanks, Danny. That was great. So, as you can see, you. sandalwood has been used much more than a fragrance uh, for thousands of years and medicinally. The science behind the oil is extremely strong and very well documented. Uh, is used more recently in Western medicine very effectively. It's a very broad essential oil in terms of its therapeutic properties. Uh, it really can, covers antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and it also has that emotional aspect to it as well. It's a beautiful oil that's so attractive aromatically, but yet it has these amazing therapeutic properties and applications for this this essential oil. Not only that, it's also very safe, low levels of toxicity and skin irritation. And the, the regulatory side is covered with the grass and the IFRA, uh, as well as if you're looking for some statements um, and some documentation from Down Under, we have a full range of documentation, including IFRA statements and allergen statements, just, just ask us. 
Central to sandalwood is that traceability and purity. Uh, you really need to source uh, this essential oil. You need to source all essential oils with confidence. Sandalwood, uh, unfortunately, in particular, given the high price of this particular essential oil, it's even more susceptible to adulteration. Unfortunately, adulteration uh, is rampant in the market and it's unfortunately to do with the possibilities along the entire supply chain of essential oils in general where adulteration can take place. So you can see on the screen right now a very simplistic uh, version of a typical supply chain starting with the essential oil farmer or producer on one end you can see along that supply chain the possibility that either the the biomass or the oil can effectively be changed in some format you know every single point along this supply chain has the possibility of input or of the oil and some sort of change that can possibly take place so it's very important that you understand the uh, where your source is, where that oil is coming from. Sandalwood in particular, uh, chemists have been able to synthesise the sandalol, the alpha and the beta sandalol. Uh, tends to be done um, with uh, the synthetic mixtures, um, the diethyl phthalates and diethyl phthalates, often sold off as sandalwood oil. But as Danny was saying, I mean, the sandalwood is, is quite a complex aroma, and particularly the Australian sandalwood. Uh, so it's very, very difficult to replicate uh, the human olfactory perception with the synthetics that people are able to create. So what do you do about it? How do you source your sandalwood with confidence? Uh, purity is absolutely pivotal it's key to the safety and efficacy of any essential oil that you use first place to start is having a look does the oil have an iso standard and clearly australian sandalwood oil does have an iso standard so be fully aware of that uh, understand the parameters of it if you're getting the australian sandalwood oil from uh, a new supplier ask for a sample a batch specific sample and a COA for that batch. First thing to do is make sure that that batch, that COA for that batch of oil complies with the specifications and the standards. The next thing you should really do is once you receive that oil in, grab a sample from that container of oil, get it tested, doesn't match. And above all, if the price seems too good, it probably is. So what we're working on um, in the essential oil industry, particularly with tea tree oil, we're about to go into a workshop in, in ways to put blockchain into tea tree, which we're hoping to roll out on a broader scale throughout essential oils from Australia, is look at putting blockchain into the supply chain for traceability. And we're very aware that um, the traceability, the provenance of the essential oils is critical. At Down Under, we've always worked with our customers for long periods of time. And our mode of operandi is trust because people trust us. Uh, we realise, however, that um, we need, the industry needs to move beyond just trust. It needs to be moving towards blockchain and full traceability and the provenance of the oils. So blockchain, uh, for the, you who may or may not, may not know so much about it, we're progressing down the blockchain because it really is an indisputable way that you can track the oil right from the producer through every single step of the way. You can access the information through all sorts of platforms, the API, the Internet of Things. You can do this um, on mobile applications. So we're looking at ways that blockchain in particular can be put into the agricultural space. So effectively what we're looking to do is take the same supply chain, put the blockchain over it and lock everything down so you can have confidence 
um, in the provenance of that oil. So what we're going to look at now is of the uh, iconic Australian oils, we're going to be looking at sandalwood and what uh, the Australian government is doing for traceability, for sustainability of Australian sandalwood. I've got to say this is absolutely the leader in the essential oil world for building sustainability around an essential oil. So at this point, I'm going to hand, over, hand it over to Campbell from FPC that he, so that he can talk to you about FPC and their efforts in the traceability and sustainability of Australian sandalwood. Before talking about sandalwood traceability or specifically Australian sandalwood centralum spicatum traceability, I thought I'd give the listeners a bit of an overview of the Forest Products Commission or the FPC, uh, which will provide some good context as we go through the presentation. Uh, the FPC is a statutory authority that was established in November 2000 by the Western Australian Government and our mandate is to promote the sustainable management and development of Western Australia's forest and wood products industry using native forest, plantation and sandalwood products on land owned or leased by the state. The native forest area covers approximately 2.25 million hectares of public land in southwest Western Australia and of this area about 62% is set aside for conservation and 38% is sustainably managed as a multiple use forest, uh, which would include the uses for timber production. On an annual basis, the FPC harvests around 550,000 tonnes of log products from this resource, covering an area of around 7,400 hectares. Moving over to plantations, uh, the FPC uh, manages and owns approximately 80,000 hectares of softwood plantation estate. Uh, and we harvest around about 770 to 800,000 tonnes of log products from software plantations on an annual basis. Moving over to the Western Australian sandalwood resource, um, I'm going to talk about um, native or Australian sandalwood, which is Centralum spicatum, which naturally occurs in the southern half of the state's goldfields and rangelands area. Um, to put it into context, Australian sandalwood uh, naturally occurs over an area of around 14 million hectares and of this area the FPC would uh, harvest trees from an area covering less than 0.1% of the this area or around about 14,400 hectares per year and under license with the Department of Biodiversity Conservation and Attraction we harvest uh, around 2,000 uh, up to 2,250 tons of native sandalwood product each year. The FPC also owns um, and manages approximately 6,000 hectares of uh, Australian sandalwood plantations, um, which is uh, located in the Midwest uh, to Southwest areas of the state. As a statutory agency, the FBC is heavily regulated and our forest operations are governed by Integrated Forest Management Systems, or IFMS. Under the IFMS, FPC's native uh, forest and plantation activities are independently certified to Australian forestry standards which is a certification scheme which is endorsed by the Program for Endorsement of Forestry Certification. The FPC is proud that all of our forests are also certified under our environmental management system to ISO 1401, which is the most recognised global standard to demonstrate an organisation's commitment to environmental management. From a legality perspective, Australian sandalwood can only be harvested and processed by the FPC under licence from the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attraction. While sandalwood is not uh, included under our current AFS certification, we are able to verify the source of our sandalwood products under our IFMS and EMS uh, structures, and we're extremely excited to confirm that the FPC is in the process uh, of certifying our native sandalwood operations to AFS uh, chain of custody this year. In 2017, the FPC uh, created an, an Australian native sandalwood strategy um, with an objective to provide a roadmap on how we can maintain a vibrant native forest industry that adds significant value to economic, environmental and social outcomes, uh, particularly for regional communities in the areas where natural sandalwood uh, is distributed. One of the key opportunities that was identified was how we could create greater Aboriginal participation or industry participation in the sandalwood supply chain. Um, Initiatives that would include uh, the sandalwood dreaming strategy that has been established, 
uh, with an intent to create opportunities uh, to use Western Australian sandwood resource to drive economic development opportunities for Aboriginal communities and to grow uh, Aboriginal businesses. And um, I'll talk a little bit later, but a good example of that would be how we've used uh, Aboriginal communities for Operation Woli uh, to manually plant sandwood seeds in culturally, uh, cultural and ecological sensitive areas. Another key focal area of the FPC is to stop illegal harvesting. And um, we actually fund um, a position under the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attraction uh, for a full-time employee um, to um, work with Parks and Wildlife to curb uh, illegal harvesting out in the rangelands. It's also worth noting that the new Biodiversity Conservation Act of 2016 came into full effect on the 1st of January 2019. Uh, under the Act, there's uh, a greater uh, increase in the deterrent penalties for the unlawful trading of sandalwood, uh, increasing um, penalties from $200 under the Sandalwood Act, a sandalwood Act to $200,000 for any one individual or up to a million dollars for corporations. And um, we're really glad that this is in place and uh, the much uh, improved uh, regulations really uh, will act as a real big deterrent for uh, illegal trade. Another key aspect is uh, the continued promotion of Australian sandalwood. Um, and we work very closely with our customers uh, as well as the communities to really promote um, Australian sandalwood as a world-class uh, sustainable product. And um, really, we, that's an ongoing uh, strategy. And uh, forums like today are fantastic just to show uh, how, how sustainable and what a good product uh, native sandalwood is. Uh, we're continually looking at how we can uh, improve innovation and grow innovation uh, within the sector. And uh, we have established an innovation fund to promote new technologies and products uh, that would, would help uh, or support bring greater value to the industry. And without question, uh, sustainability now and the future uh, really underpins uh, what we do in the sandalwood space, or the native sandalwood space. And um, I'll touch on a bit later about our re-establishment program or uh, Operation Woli. Um, but it really just shows that um, from the rangelands to the processing, we really have a, a sustainable mindset. And it's all about making sure that there's a sustainable resource uh, for generations to come. This diagram is extremely useful in depicting how the FPC manages the supply of Australian sandalwood um, from the rangelands through to uh, all distillers and uh, out to the market. Um, as discussed earlier, the FPC is issued with a license to harvest Australian native sandalwood uh, by the Department of Biodiversity Conservation Attractions or Parks and Wildlife. Uh, once we have the license, um, we, using our FPC managed contractors, harvest and haul sandalwood products from the rangelands to our centralised sandalwood processing facility, um, which is outsourced to a uh, independent uh, sandalwood processor uh, who's managed by the Forest Products Commission uh, to turn the wild product into uh, different grades of uh, sandalwood that can be used by industry. Um, on an annual basis, around about 500 tonnes of raw sandalwood uh, that goes through the processing facility can be used or suitable for the use of uh, creation of uh, oil dis uh, quality oil products. Um, once the product has been processed uh, in the factory and is in the warehouse, um, we either sell it to uh, our customers who have a direct contract with us or through to customers uh, who um, bid on sandalwood product under a panel of buyers arrangement that we've established. Um, once, uh, if successful uh, under this arrangement, uh, our various contractors, uh, or sorry, customers can purchase the sandalwood and they then distill, distill that into their uh, high-end oil products, uh, which can be sold to both uh, the domestic and international markets. What's very important is coming back, um, once we've harvested and hauled the product, uh, is FPC sandalwood regeneration activities uh, which uh, really underpins the sustainability of the whole process and which I'm going to talk to you next. F FPC is very proud of our sandalwood regeneration activities uh, and aptly, uh, we've aptly called it Operation Waoli. Waoli is a uh, marsupial that's uh, endemic to Western Australia and South Australia and uh, it actually uh, picks up the seeds uh, and actually buries them, uh, the sandalwood seeds, and buries them uh, in the rangelands uh, and is credited with the broad distribution of sandalwood seeds um, in its natural environment. 
Unfortunately, there's been a, a significant population crash due to the introduction of feral cats, um, and this has really had an adverse effect on um, uh, the uh, regeneration of sandalwood in the rangelands. Um, our team has worked closely with um, scientists to establish a, a mechanical way of actually replicating uh, their uh, or mimic their way of uh, digging or, 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 or planting seeds in the ground uh, for regeneration. Um, so we've been able to commercialize this and we actually plant uh, in excess of 7 million seeds per annum across an area ranging about 1,500 kilometers. Um, we have great success with this. Um, and uh, as mentioned earlier, we've also been able to uh, incorporate our sandalwood dreaming strategy uh, to involve uh, people living in Aboriginal communities to mainly plant uh, seeds in culturally and ecologically sensitive areas. Um, so this really closes the loop um, where we re-establish and regenerate sandalwood uh, in the rangelands uh, to make sure that we've got an extremely or a uh, wholly sustainable um, sandalwood industry. So in summary, consumers of uh, Australian native sandalwood or Centalum spicatum sourced from the FPC can have a high degree of confidence that there's very uh, rigorous regulations and checks and balances in place um, for the uh, harvesting and supply of sandalwood from its natural rangelands uh, in the goldfields uh, region. Uh, as noted, uh, sandalwood is harvested under licence uh, under the Forest Products Commission's IFMS governance system. Uh, wood is sorted and processed and batched within um, the processing, a centralised processing facility that is also ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 certified. Um, this is then sold to customers who distill by batch in batches. Uh, a GC cert certificate uh, of analysis by batch is produced and um, product or oil is exported to the overseas markets. Thank you, Campbell. That was uh, it, this, this traceability and the sustainability story of Australian sandalwood really is unsurpassed in the essential oil market. And it makes it very comforting and very um, just just very comforting when we're out talking to people about sustainability that Australian sandalwood does have this watertight sustainability and traceability story. So to conclude, uh, sandalwood beyond the fragrance, there is an ISO standard uh, for both the Australian and the Indian sandalwood oils. Therapeutic properties are very exciting uh, beyond the fragrance. It's, it's a well accepted oil with strong uh, safety and regulatory. There is a, there are adulteration risks um, and beware of that because it will impact the safety and efficacy, but there are ways to work with that. Uh, the traceability and sustainability story supported by the West Australian Government and FBC in particular is, as Camp just went through, very tight. So we have a white paper on the therapeutic uses of Australian sandalwood oil. So please check your emails tomorrow to download a copy of that white paper, and I think that you'll find it extremely interesting. Um, and we hope that you enjoy reading that. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the question portion of this webinar. Um, so the first question is, how does Australian sandalwood oil compare with the Indian sandalwood oil? As I told in uh, one of the slides, uh, it's based on the santalol content, alpha and beta santalol content, which gives that sweet uh, woody aroma of uh, sandalwood. So um, the Indian sandalwood has more uh, santanol content when compared to uh, Western Australian sandalwood. So uh, when the standards are set, it is set having the Indian sandalwood as the as the benchmark. So the quality-wise, Indian sandalwood is in a higher um, higher uh, higher value. But the Australian sandalwood is more complex. So it has some other components like bisabolols, anisoferols. Uh, curcuminols and all that. So that will give a more of a woody, earthy type of an aroma. And also, uh, they give m m more antimicrobial, antiviral activities because these are much more uh, potent uh, ingredients. So, uh, so those are the two differences what I see clearly for a chemical as well as activity-wise differences for sandalwood, uh, two sandalwood types. Thank you. How fast does sandalwood does a sandalwood tree grow? And how do you efficiently extract and isolate the zimaminic 
acid within sandalwood. Okay, I can talk to the zyronic acid. The zyronic acid is not found in the essential oil itself. The zyronic acid is found in the sandalwood seed. And that's zyronic acid is a very exciting uh, component of uh, the sandalwood seed oil. And if you'd like, or if anybody would like some information on the sandalwood seed oil, um, please do contact Down Under because we have some very interesting uh, papers, uh, research, uh, potential therapeutic properties with the sandalwood seed oil. Does your sandalwood comply with California Proposition 65, meaning that it has no potential carcinogens? Yes, the short answer to that is uh, yes, it does, and we can certainly provide documentation to that effect. Thanks, Annie. Is sandalwood oil effective on soap and face wash? Uh, yes, I mean it, it is uh, for for uh, because as you know, any wash off product would leave any uh, the active ingredients or the fragrance in the ingredients only in trace amounts because it's going to wash. But sandalwood oil being a more lipid soluble uh, compound, it, it may stay on the skin. Um, so having natural sandalwood oil in your wash off products such as soaps and uh, uh, face washes, especially in case of acne, it, it, is, it is effective. Thank you. How old are the trees from which the oil is taken? So the oil itself, uh, the oils, the trees really need to mature greater than 20 years. And the older the trees, the higher quality of the oil, the scent oils come through further. So generally 20 to 30 years. And then if you start getting trees that are about 50 years old, which um, they produce a very, very high quality, a premium grade of sandalwood, as the scent oils tend to go over the 25%. The ISO so standard uh, for Australian sandalwood is between uh, 15 and 25 percent, so that's a, a wonderful quality oil. And then anything over the 25 percent is really a premium grade oil that is produced from the older trees uh, up around that 50 years old. Does real sandalwood oil increase hair growth similar to the artificial version? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, the, the reason is. Uh, one of the common um, sand, sandalwood uh, analogs, what we call, uh, which a synthetic compound which gives sandalwood type, um, sandalwood-like aroma is, uh, is sandalow. Uh, it's uh, patented as, as uh, in, under the trade name of sandalow from uh, Fermanic. Uh, that has an effect because as you know, the only part of the molecule gives the sandalwood aroma in our, in our olfactory receptors in the nose, but the other part of it has an effect on our hair follicles to increase the uh, hair growth. But that is a different molecule. It is not available in uh, natural sandwood. So uh, sandwood um, essential oil does not promote hair growth. Does Australia have the capacity to grow most essential oils sustainably? Australia does. Uh, Australia is a enormous continent with a, a vast array of climates and terrains on our continent. Uh, can I say it grows, can grow all essential oils? No, I can't say that because we would have to test all of them. But I do know that Australia has been used internationally as a hub for um, a climate to test all sorts of climates throughout the world because we can find a climate in Australia that is similar to another climate in another country, another continent. Um, obviously, we have the native Australian oils that we deal with, but we also in Australia do grow non-native oils. Uh, top of mind is, say, lavender and peppermint. Uh, sustainability is very much in Australia, we're very focused on clean, green, sustainable. It's part of the way that uh, we operate generally, and it's very much a mindset and it's very much a target for growers and also the government bodies that support us agriculturally. So sustainable, uh, traceable, a broad array of essential oils can certainly be grown and is currently grown in Australia.
Okay, so regarding blockchain, are the formulators slash indie beauty founders and suppliers using blockchain already, or is it something new? Blockchain is something new within the essential oil world. Uh, as we're moving, and I'm speaking from more from a tea tree perspective now, as we're moving towards uh, putting the blockchain on the tea tree supply so that we can uh, assure buyers of the Australian provenance, uh, we're talking obviously to more and more people in the market. And there are occurrences uh, we, around the world uh, starting to see a little bit uh, being put on some uh, some oils, some ingredients, uh, but it is a, a very new uh, progress in the essential oil world, which has really been um, furthered by the amount of adulterated oil that is in the market, um, whether that's people adding ingredients into the essential oil, taking them out, adding synthetics, uh, creating a completely synthetic uh, somewhat they're naming it an essential oil where it's just completely synthetic. So we're really having to, as I said earlier in the presentation, move beyond the trust um, and then actually put the, the blockchain, the documentation, and really lock that documentation down using the blockchain uh, and uh, doing that successfully. So we are doing it, as I say, on the tea tree industry. We're moving towards that way. Very lucky with the Australian Sandalwood. We've always been able to rely on the West Australian Government, FPC's uh, sustainability story, the traceability, the programs that they have in place. Um, but on a broader level, blockchain is going to uh, be laid across essential oils. And, uh, you know, I, I think it will increasingly be rolled out across all Australian, all, all Australian essential oils and then hopefully even beyond that. Thank you. Has Down Under done super critical ex extracts for sandalwood? No, we, we have not. Uh, we've always worked um, with, uh, ex with the oil coming from the wood through steam distillation. Um, one of the suppliers that we work with on Australian sandalwood oil was the first person to actually extract sandalwood oil from the wood using steam distillation, and that's always been the way that we have worked with uh, Australian sandalwood. Does Down Under have tests using in vitro and in vivo data to support anti-inflammatory properties of the sandalwood oil? Danny, I'm going to throw that one over to you in terms of the science and what's uh, available scientifically. Yeah, the uh, the current studies, if uh, uh, to be uh, correct, these studies are not uh, conducted. Uh, the uh, anti-inflammatory and the microbial studies have been established for quite a long time. So um, we have actually done a literature survey and Found it, but um, when it comes to sandwich seed oil, it's a different story. But which uh, which is conducted uh, within our group. Um, so uh, most of these studies are in vitro studies because uh, from the from the beginning uh, uh, we followed it uh, based on the cosmetic and uh, personal care uh, industry requirements. Um, but some of the studies what we have reported on, especially like. Uh, central nervous system or other toxicity studies have been done generally, not, not specifically for this market or done by the downland enterprises. Uh, does that uh, answer your question, Abby? Yes. Um, would yes. sandalwood oil um, add a benefit to anti-aging creams? And if yes, which sandalwood oil would work better, Australian or Indian, or does it depend on the formulation? Uh, it's it's hard to say which one would uh, do better because the uh, the quality the alpha sandalol and beta sandalol it's, it's something for your for your olfactory or the aroma perception not on the the activity wise so I would expect having a quite a similar chemical structure most of the sesquiterpenes would act on anti-inflammatory activity which is I think would be the most closest um, towards anti-aging, uh, anti as we know, like a lot of uh, lot of uh, anti-aging products, therapeutic products, or the pseudotherapeutic products that we see today, are uh, actually 
producing that uh, like processing the anti-aging activity through the uh, to uh, through the anti-inflammatory pathway so i at this stage we can't say which one would be more effective but um, i would see sandwood oil uh, would be a uh, would be very a potential candidate in that thank you thank you um is there a North American distributor for your uh, sandalwood oil? Uh, at Down Under, we have a direct uh, sales force in North America. We have two salespeople located within North America, and we have a warehouse in Cleveland, Ohio. How concerned is Down Under uh, with adulteration in the essential oil industry as a whole? We're concerned. I mean, adulteration is a definite factor, uh, not only not only in sandwood, but across all essential oils. Uh, and and this is not uh, just uh, confined to Australian oils. This is a global, uh, a very unfortunate global consideration. Uh, very unfortunately, as people as people who do the adulteration, you know, get smarter for want of a better word with adulteration, it becomes. Uh, harder and harder to uh, predict or uh, to uh, identify. I mean, as the industry continues down uh, a more scientific path, we are finding ways to uh, identify the adulteration, whether that's uh, using uh, chiral analysis, say for tea tree oil. The ISO standards are always going to be a great place to start because that's what the international community uh, the parameters that the international community sets for the particular essential oils. Um, so we, the ISO standard is where you want to start. Uh, make sure the oil does that, uh, sits there. Uh, then there's other scientific ways that you can find out whether oil has been adulterated. Say, for example, tea tree oil. We very much rely on chiral analysis now. Uh, the ISO standards, and Danny sits on the ISO standard as ISO committee for uh, oil, so he's very well placed to answer this as well from an ISO perspective. Um, but to me, it really comes down to know your source, know where you're buying your oil from. Um, preferably know the, the, the grower, the producer. If you can't do that because it is really hard sometimes to get back to the actual producer, um, make sure your distributor is very, very close to that um, grower or, pro or producer. Make sure you trust that source. And then as I say, over time, more and more is going to go towards a blockchain. So it really takes the trust out of the system, unfortunately, but it's going to give the buyer the absolute confidence that that oil that they are buying is 100% pure and natural and has been fully trace traceable. And then of course you want the sustainability story that overlays that. Okay, so this is going to be our last question of the webinar. If you have more questions or your questions have not been answered, please reach out to our wonderful panelists from Down Under who will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, so the last question is, do you make a blend of oils derived from two to three species or is it from a single species of sandalwood? Uh, at Down Under, we don't do any blending. Uh, we have a very simple system. We uh, either produce the oil and then uh, distill it, drum it, or we work with the growers who produce the oil, distill it and drum it. We do no blending, we do no changing, no modification to the essential oils that we sell in absolutely any way. So it's 100% pure, natural, uh, essential oil. Thank you all for attending today's webinar. Just as a reminder, we will send you a link to the recording of today's webinar so that you can watch it anytime and share it with others at your company. We will also follow up to any questions we weren't able to get to today. Thank you again for attending and have a great day.